I normally have to do this uh, for most of my sessions because you are not the kind of people that we market our product to. Uh, just a brief introduction because we'll, we'll share some of the examples out of the work that we've done. Uh, broadly, Ultratech, how many would you of you would have heard the name? Okay. How many of you think we are a B2B company, B2C company, B2B, if you guys can raise hands? Okay. Assuming rest of you are saying B2C? Both? Both? Okay. Uh, so what part would be B2C, according to you? Yeah, yeah but how large? 20%? 20 20 percent would be B2C. Okay. And uh, what's the scale do you think we bring to the table, say top line, etc.? This is not an architect presentation. The reason why I'm giving, it's a little context, right? That's, that's all out of the examples. Any numbers? 5,000, 10,000, 4,000? OK, we'll, we'll go to the numbers. So I'll not test your patience anymore. We are a 70% B2C company. We last year touched about 70,000 crores, about eight and a half billion dollars. Bottom line, about 1.6 billion dollars. We've grown at about, for the last six, seven years, we've grown at about 16, 16 and a half percent. And nearly 65% of our volume is rural, right? The trade volume is rural. Uh, this is also a chart which gives me, uh, I have spent a bulk of my career in FMCG, so it doesn't give me joy, but I think it just gives lens context. This is a Kantar chart, which the bottom, the green chart, the green uh, area defines the GDP growth rate of India, and uh, the black chart is the FMCG growth rate for the last 10 years. So barring the period when we were stocking our, our pantries for, for uh, COVID. I think last 10 years, FMCG has kind of dragged itself below the GDP growth rate. Compared to that, we've grown nearly 2x that of the category, nearly three, three, two and a half times the GDP growth rate, nearly 2x that of FMCG uh, at that rate. Okay. Now, why, why do I give that long context? Uh, A, I hope by the end of the, the presentation you guys have something valuable from marketing, digital, storytelling, etc. So first I change the, change the title which was given to me by E4M. Instead of learning the rules of Digitech for storytelling, I put it storytelling and then learn the rules of, of Digitech because that one talks about the priorities. But this gentleman, who you'll recognize, uh, he said one time and very potently, and he believed it, that storytellers are the most powerful people uh, in the world. In fact, while we are talking about high tech and new technology and many of the phrases that you might throw at me, I might not be familiar, but this is the oldest and the most durable technology in the world, storytelling. And uh, I still distinctly remember the day he uh, introduced the iPhone. His first statement was, uh, I've waited two and a half years to, for this day to unveil this stuff in front of you, right? Masterful storytelling. So I'll try and share a little bit of context. Some of those things might appear rather simple, but the reason why I put some of those rules or some of the learnings that we've had on storytelling, only because I think nine times out of 10, they are violated more than, than truly understood, okay? Few first very, very quick principles and we'll get into details of it. First piece, while we are, yeah, we are a group which is very dedicated to technology and the latest happenings in, in, in that domain, I think first piece, we've always got to remember that we are talking to human beings. And human beings have a certain software 
They have certain pluses, minuses, and the storytelling has to deal with that. Things like there is a limited attention span. There is stuff which they believe or they work on their context that is, that is very, very important. Second, I think uh, human beings, while machines talk and understand things in, in uniform terms, I think the meaning of being different is very, very different for human beings. And we'll talk a few examples today about that. Context is everything. And it also makes sense from a programmatic point of view that wherever you cannot define the context, you cannot define storytelling. You cannot be sure of what people have taken out. Our job as marketers and business people is not to deliver as post postmen a message from point A to point B. It's what is registered in this most valuable real estate up there is, is what our job is. And if that doesn't happen, everything else is academic. Second, I think there has been B2B digital marketers have done a fabulous job by promoting a certain amount of FOMO among marketers. Uh, but I think they've, to an extent, some of these technologies have under-delivered. Partly, it's their fault. Partly, it's the selling story that they've given to us. But uh, the most promised thing about targeting right, the most promised thing about narrow casting and going to a certain set of people, I think that's a piece which has been most violated by some of these digital technologies. And we've found our way, we've worked our way around, or we've tricked our way around in terms of how to do targeting. And we've defined by being useful, we target. And we'll take those examples more. And oftentimes, I think, because we don't keep the large picture in mind, you often have to worry as to whose problem are you solving. Are you solving the company's problem, your own self, right? Most times we are projecting our problem. The other times, now we've increasingly started, because of FOMO of these digital technologies, we've started solving the digital ecosystem's problems, right? So we are not bothered about what is the story that we want to tell to our audience, but it has to be thumb stopping, three second, five second, it has to obey along all those rules. So you have to wonder as to whose problem are you solving? Are you solving the company's problem? Are you solving the digital ecosystem's problem? Or are you solving the consumer's problem? Because that's the person who finally pays all our salaries, right? Second, I think another golden rule about storytelling, it's not good enough to just tell facts. And facts essentially are the least persuasive. Our job largely is persuasion. Our job is not passing on a message or registering a message and delivering a message at a certain level. Our job is persuasion and creating memory structures which a non-consumer or a consumer might at some point of time when the need arises think of us and we be the 3AM friend for that person when our category is in need, right? And we are there to solve a jobs to be done. Second, I think we love being complicated, right? Till the time, I think it satisfies, marketing actually is a fairly serious, uh, very simple job. Actually, it's not too complicated. And maybe it's my perception because I come from up north, the state of Punjab, where I think people are relatively simple, right? So. Maybe it's me, but I think we love to overcomplicate our job to give ourselves the due importance that we so want from our peers and from our, our careers, right? Somebody told me a very interesting definition of strategy, right? They said strategy is what not to do, right? If you are going to throw 10 balls at me, the chance of me catching all those 10 balls is very, very low. Even more, but the chance of me catching the right ball that you want me to catch is even lower. Therefore, rather than depend upon chance, I think 
in communication, in storytelling, you've got to be sharp. You've got to decide what you don't want to do rather than what you want to do, right? Because we are talking to human beings, there is huge piece of how memory is built and how to be consistent, how to be recognized as a brand in that short span period of time. So building those distinctive assets and being consistent with them, being the one piece that you want to stand for in the most expensive real estate, which is the consumer's mind, I think you've got to be consistent. I'm sure since morning and I think post this session also, you guys will talk a lot about efficiency. I think that should be the last 5% of the time that you should spend. It's always effectiveness before efficiency. Most times we are so busy chasing efficiency, we miss the trick. In fact, there's a great old story during British Raj, they wanted to drive out snakes and they put a bounty on people who will catch snakes in the, in the old city in Delhi. The result of that was there was a huge explosion of snakes in the, in the Delhi, in capital. Because people, to get the bounty, kept doing, getting snakes from all over the place and maybe Haryana and Punjab got devoid of snakes. The same seems to be the story as far as media and advertising. So are we in the business of persuasion? Are we in the media business? Are we in the advertising business? I think those are questions that you need to think really hard on to yourself. And this is a gentleman who was a father of advertising who put the ad, put the copy guy and the art guy for the first time together and responsible for some of the most iconic advertising on, uh, uh, in, in the world in the 50s. And he talked about if all the stuff that you've done, all the strategy, all the technology that you've put together and all the features and, and things that you've got to put together and if nobody notices you, everything else is academic. All these are consequences of the first statement that we talked about that remember we are not talking to machines, we are talking to human beings. And we have a limited bandwidth, we have a limited attention, we have limited gestalt. I must admit that digital advertisers have been fabulous B2B marketers. And they've gotten us into FOMO, and we've, we like, a, and I, I own a pet, so I'm giving this analogy. I think each time they throw a term, every three to four years, and we go on our bellies for somebody to rub our bellies on, on, and the latest term earlier was metaverse, now it is AI, and so on and so forth, right? So you've got to stay with stuff that is consistent rather than that changes. And the stuff that is consistent is, again, going back to the first thing, you are always talking to human beings who have not changed for 5,000 years and who are not going to change another 2,000 years. Understand the task. Is your task message delivery? Is your task persuasion? Is your task category creation? What's your task? And be, be laser focused on that task. You would have a lot of distractions because of the pipes that are there on the way for you to change focus from the task. But remember what we said about strategy. Strategy is what not to do. So be very clear what you want to do and what not to do. Second, oftentimes it might appear that I'm, I think immediately after lunch they put somebody to berate, berate the new technologies. I'm not after that. I think you've got to figure out no medicine is good or bad. No tool is good or bad. You've got to find out what ails you. If you have a stomach ache and if you are taking a headache medicine, yeah, won't result. So you've got to understand the strengths and weaknesses of the tool. A knife's work is done by a knife's work and a fork's work is done by a fork's work. Till the time you understand the weaknesses of the medium that you're talking about, you're oftentimes likely to go awry. Digital is a tremendously poor attention-giving medium, right? 
but it also has some superpowers which we didn't have as marketers, as business people on our disposal earlier, right? We talk about mental availability. Suddenly, a lot of this advertising that we are putting on forth is also willing, believing, bringing along physical availability, right? Things that we had never thought about, right? The other piece to remember is tech develops far faster than we understand how to use it. And therefore, be very vigilant about how other people are using tech. You don't learn only by your own mistakes. You learn by how other people have done the work, right? And the first piece that somebody uh, used out of the Gutenberg press, they printed the Bible. They didn't know how knowledge transfer, that press would transform knowledge transfer. The first thing that electricity did, they tried to replace horses, right? Today, you have multiple uses which have nothing to do with horses, but you immediately can't think of, of the uses of technology. Second, digital can do a lot more than advertising. It's the super part, but some parts on advertising, it does pretty poorly. So you've got to understand the weaknesses and strengths. Last, like I said, you can add to the, to the path to purchase the physical availability through digital, right? Something that wasn't ever possible. This is the global piece on, on the, the media. A large part of this media landscape is governed by programmatic today, by machines today stuff that we don't understand and we are too scared to ask each other. We don't ask stuff because we appear foolish, right? Fortunately, or unfortunately, I continue to defy that piece from my own perspective. I keep asking stupid questions in, in meetings and people stare at me. Oftentimes my team is embarrassed of me, but that's all right. Somebody's got to do the dirty work. If I take you to uh, this is a recent study but done by ANA, Association of National Advertisers. They took some large 21 programmatic advertisers and took off the $1,000 that they was being spent, how much is reaching the consumer. About 71% was reaching the seller and because of the other leakage, only about 36% was reaching the consumer. If I said that about the water coming to your home, that is the amount of leakage, I think you'd fire the plumber. Yeah? So you've got to be really, and because we don't completely understand it, we don't get into the nitty gritties of it, the margins are there because there is a mystery. Because we really, really don't understand the, the beast that we are dealing with. Yeah? Okay. So marketing broadly is about listening and storytelling. But for storytelling, for, for the first rules, one of the first rules and most important rules is listening. If you don't have something interesting to say, insightful to say, useful to, to say to the, your consumers, whatever storytelling that you're going to be doing is going to be a waste. And listening is not such an easy ask. Most times our profession is not, if you may, we are all type A people, we don't listen very well, especially to our consumers. This is one stat of all advertising that we do. They say 4% is remembered positively, 7% is remembered negatively, which is not such a bad story. The worst story is, nearly 89%, 90% of it is not remembered at all. That's the crime. And the reasons are we don't ask the right questions. So far, we had a problem that we are such type A people, we love our brands. We are so much in love with our products and categories and what we are selling because it pays our salary, we forget that consumers don't care. They have a mother-in-law, they have crying kids, they have a bad boss, they have loads of problems and you don't figure in any one of them. 
So being relevant, so putting together in the consumer's life how your category plays the context role, that's what storytelling is all about. Storytelling is not about the products, features, etc. It's about the consumer's life and what role do we play in it. If you ask people here, we all define our jobs in many of these terms, right? Content creation, heuristics, algorithms, big data, etc., etc. But what we don't understand fundamentally, and I'd love for E4M to have a conference like that, how do people work? How do we absorb information? How do we absorb advertising? That's the most important piece for us to understand. Still the best search engine is the human mind. Because still the time you think about it, you're not gonna type stuff. You might have prompt engineers, but something needs to be prompted, right? And that comes out of the human brain. I'll just flip a few things, sorry. What's the market share of X in this chart? Easy enough question. Lunch was not so good. Anybody? Smart people in the room. Sorry? 14%. For a machine, it is 14%. For a human being, it is 50%. Because we think in categories. That's the difference. We always think very, very logically. Right? That's the power of being different. In our category, on cement, time's up, so I'll just, yeah. In our category, I'll just give very brief examples where everybody was busy putting wrecking balls to show how strong their cement is. We tried to be different. And we tried to listen to the consumers and try to be insightful. Because we understood, despite what the consumers were saying, that they were building homes for their kids and for financial security and for that they can't put a nail into the wall, what we understood the real reason that they were not confessing on to was their building a home at 35 years old to build, prove their competence to the world around. Because most of the people that we deal with are not people like us. 80% of India doesn't have a regular salary. They don't have a designation. They don't have a degree. And therefore, what stands for their competence and identity is the big structure that they built together, right? That nobody would want to confess to you. But you've got to listen really, really carefully. And despite the fact that we were being very different versus the category, in fact, that's the bonus that we were being different versus the category. And that's why you saw we grew that, that much. Uh, I'll skip most of this. Uh, I'll, because we are talking digital, I'll just talk about we talked about instead of using digital from a targeting point of view, we said we'll not use digital from advertising point of view. It's a use case that we will do because in India, a 35 year old is what the average age is of somebody building the home. That person has, pardon my French, diddly shit idea about how to build such a complicated project. And the cost of going wrong is almost like getting your father's heart operated or getting married. If the cost is so high, stakes are so high, it's about your identity and your competence and the process is irreversible and they don't know what to do, instead of selling cement, we should help him solve a problem in his life which earlier we weren't able to do that. So simple stuff, storytelling, irreversible things that they couldn't go wrong about. That simple stuff has touched God. That simple stuff on digital from a cement brand has touched about 150 million in the last two years. 
That has also taken in a category our brand equity to nearly 50% higher. It's taken up, we earn more premium than Hindustan Lever earns on their soaps. And that too versus the premium brands, rest of the premium brands within the category. We've done the rope trick of uh, not only increasing market share, but also increasing premium. So I think simple lessons, and we've made the stuff that we were talking about so boring, that's only useful for not everybody else, but is only useful for people who are building their home, which is a great targeting, yeah, reverse psychology with our consumers, right? So it's done the trick for us. Uh, this, if I can leave you with some financial gains for your own self, this is a chart for the last five years how Ultratech, if you invested 100 bucks into Ultratech, you today, or at least a few days back, you would have 250 bucks. If you invested on the Sensex, you would have 206. If you invested on Hindustan Unilever, you would have 150. If you invested on some of our friends, you would have 160. And if you invested in ITC, about 160, right? So, secret within the room, is our product tremendously better? Maybe, maybe not. Our storytelling has been really sharp. And we've been laser focused on not the pipes, or not the mediums, but what we want to do and how we can solve the consumer's problem. Yeah, thanks. I'll leave you for questions.